This is the question that has the force position graph on it. Uh, so for the AP folks, this is going to be, I'm looking at the wrong page, this is going to be uh, question 36 onwards. So some students want to investigate force versus distance. They had attached a force probe to a block, all right, that's a force probe, it could be a spring scale, but if they're going to get these, this detail, the results, you'd need some sort of, um, like a vernier sensor, force sensor that would record it, and it records some points as it goes along. So they attach a force probe to a block, pull the block along the surface of a flat, frictionless, horizontal table. Uh, they graph the results on the force position graph below, force position graph, you've got this on uh, here, right? Um, and so refer to that when you're doing this. All right. Uh, so you notice I tried to give you some realistic looking points kind of scattered around here. You know, the, uh, they scattered around and then they go like this. And you are supposed to interpret that as being um, linear. During the first, four, first segment, that's linear from 0 to 8 newtons and 0 to 4 meters. And then... Uh, sorry, that, yeah, linear relationship, all right, that's a straight line, <laughs> and that's supposed to be a straight line also. Right? Whenever you see a force position graph, and this is going to be true also with the force time graph, right? Whenever you see a force position graph, you know you're going to need to find the area of this. Not only be able to describe what's happening, this thing is speeding up because of the positive force, speeding up with a increase in acceleration because force is directly proportional to acceleration. The force is going up, the acceleration must be going up it's as it moves in the positive direction from 0 to 8 meters. Over here, it's still speeding up, not constant velocity. It's still speeding up with constant acceleration because force is constant as you slide it. Um, if this were going down, it would still be speeding up, but speeding up with a decreasing acceleration, not a negative acceleration, a decreasing acceleration. All right, because your force is still positive up here, it's still speeding up, but the rate at which it's speeding up, that itself is decreasing. I know, that's, just, that's stuff, I mean, for me too, give me an Advil. Um, anyhow, uh, you know you're going to have to find area. So you know you have to find area. So find area, to find area. So triangle is a half base times height. A half times four is two. Two times eight is 16 joules. The area of a force position graph is work, right? Um, and then the area of this one is, 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 um, is a rectangle, so it's 4 to 8 is 4 meters times 8 newtons. That's 4 times 8 is 32 newton meters or 32 joules. All right, so that's 32 joules, which means that the overall work done must equal 16 plus 32 is 48 joules. That's where that 48 comes from. Um, I believe that's the correct answer. Yay! Okay, so how would you describe the motion of the object from, from between 0 and 4 meters? Between 0 and 4 meters, um, 0 and 4 meters is right here, right? This is meters on the x-axis. We actually have an x on the x-axis. <laughs> what a concept. This is in Newtons, of course. Okay, how would you describe the motion here? It's speeding up with an increasing acceleration. Speeding up at an increasing rate, if you will. The rate of the speed itself is, the rate of the increase in speed is increasing. Does that make sense? It's speeding up with an increasing acceleration. Um, how would you describe the motion of the object between four and eight meters? I've already done that. Um, it's still speeding up, but it's speeding up with a constant acceleration. Yay. What, would, what is the approximate, question 38, what is the approximate change in kinetic energy of the box over eight meters from here to here? Well, if you do uh, 48, it's on a horizontal surface, right? Horizontal, frictionless surface. I have to look at my question again. Flat, frictionless, horizontal table is what the question says. So that means that there's no change in potential energy. There's no friction. And so the uh, 48 joules provided by the applied force over 8 meters, the 48 joules all goes into kinetic energy. And so network, which is... The 48 joules is equal to the change in energy, which is, in this case, all kinetic. And so what's the answer? 48 joules. All right. This becomes the work due to the applied force equals the change in kinetic energy, which is what the question asks for. What's the approximate change in kinetic energy? 48 joules. Okay, so the next question is over 
here, let me just make a little space. Uh-oh, we've lost our power, well, power cord, ha. Um, everybody still with me? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, so we're looking at this thing, okay. You have, uh, that's this one right here. You have block A right there, block B. These are supposed to be different angles, and they, they are, okay. Uh, block A has half of the mass of block B. So the easiest way to look at these things is you have M over 2 for that mass and M for that one. Uh, they are on frictionless, that's really important, frictionless ramps. They um, are released from rest from at the same time from the same height. The same height is also important. So that height right here is the same height vertically as that one, released from the same height. Of course, this one's going to slide, you know, it's got to go further distance, right? Because it's a shallower angle. It's further distance there. This one's going to go a shorter distance because it's a steeper angle. Okay. Um, all right, compare the kinetic energy of the blocks at the bottom of the ramps. Well, they have potential, this guy has potential energy up here. It's going to have kinetic energy down here. And if it's frictionless, then the, the um, the uh, potential energy it has up here becomes its kinetic energy. Same number, right? Energy is conserved right down here. Now, this one's going to have its potential energy, which is going to be twice as great, right? It's at the same height. Potential energy is M times G times H. Same G, same H, twice the mass. So it'll have twice the potential energy right here. And all of its potential energy is going to be kinetic to con converted to its kinetic energy down here. So potential energy becomes kinetic. Uh, if you made up a number and said that the, the potential energy is 4,000 joules here, it would have 4,000 joules of kinetic energy right here. Conservation of energy. It, it's a frictionless environment. Um, since that one has twice the mass, again, potential energy, UG equals MGH. All right. Both of them have the same G, same H. That one, B, has twice the mass compared to that one, so it would have twice the potential energy. All of the potential energy is converted to its kinetic energy down here. So um, it must have twice the kinetic energy. B must have twice the kinetic energy of A at the bottom because it started out with twice the potential energy. Uh, compare the speeds of the blocks at the bottom of the ramps. This is, this is classic AP stuff. The speeds would be the same, right? Because remember mass cancels out in these, in these equations. Um, the kinetic energy at the top becomes the potential energy at the bottom. So one half in v i squared. That's the initial energy or initial velocity. Um, so bad, bad teacher, bad teacher, bad teacher, bad teacher. Um, it starts out. God, I'm sorry. Um, initial potential. That's yeah, initial potential becomes final kinetic. Um, kinetic. The potential right here becomes the kinetic right there. The potential right there becomes the kinetic at the bottom, right? And so whether it's block A or block B. This is going to be M, G, Y, I, or H, if you will, um, equals 1 half M, V, F squared. The M's cancel, and they both have the same G. They both have the same initial height. That's this. And they're only, so they're both going to have the same speed. Um, it doesn't matter that the angles are the same. Uh, if I were to drop this straight down through the air, it would hit the ground at the exact same speed as this thing going sliding down that ramp. If you were, if this were you on a water slide that um, has all sorts of way cool bumps on it, you know, and the things, you know, wee, you'd still have the same speed at the very bottom, okay? Because it's just comparing your initial potential energy due to your initial height to um, your kinetic energy here. And then I think there's one more question. Compare the time taken for each of uh, for each block to uh, reach the bottom of the ramp. Well, hopefully you see that B is going to take longer. All right, it ha it's going to have less acceleration. Remember the acceleration is g sine theta. It has less fgx. All right, all right. It bit bunny slope versus double black diamond. Bunny slope. It's got less force acting on it. Less fgx. Um, the main thing is the acceleration. Forget the, the force. The, the acceleration is g sine theta, all right? 
And again, bunny slope, it's got, it's got less acceleration over a greater distance. This has more acceleration, g sine theta, greater theta, greater angle, greater acceleration. Again, take the extreme, let it drop straight down. All right, it's not gonna take as long to fall straight down as it is to slide down the ramp. And the longer the ramp, the longer it's gonna take. It's kind of common sense. Um, even in a frictionless environment, yeah, it's gonna have the same speed at the bottom, no matter what the mass is, um, the time's got nothing to do with the mass. The time has to do with the angle and the resulting distance it has to travel, and it's less ex the fact this has less acceleration. Less acceleration because it has a shallower angle. Again, think about bunny slope Bruce um, when you're skiing. Okay, bunny slope, less acceleration, but to get down the same overall height, you have to go a longer distance, all right, because you're taking a more gradual route. It's going to take a lot longer than if you go down the precipitous double black diamond. Ah! You're going to get down a lot faster, all right? Um, okay, so this one will take longer than that one. Again, that's nothing to do with speed. The speeds are the same at the bottom. It's got nothing to do with uh, height because they're at the same height. It has to do with this one has to go further, and it's going to do it um, with a lesser acceleration because it's a lower angle. Well, that, again, was loads of fun. So is that everything? Yeah. Okay, so B takes more time than A. A takes less time than B. Okay, good.